So from USC, uh, LA County, USC, you went to Stanford, and what did you do mm -hmm. at Stanford? So at Stanford, I did my dermatology residency there. And that's a, so you go to med school for four years, you do an internship for a year, and then you go off and you specialize in another field. Now a lot of people don't think dermatologists are real doctors. We really are, <laughs> we do go to medical school and all those other things. Um, but anyway, so it was a three-year program beyond medical school, and it's where you get your training, so. Stanford was the best place. And uh, you did your residency there, so we're probably in like 1984. Mm -hmm. right Started there. And you got some advice from the chairman of your department. Talk about that and how it affected your career. Yeah, um, and, and I think you alluded to it, this also at the beginning in the intro <laughs> that, um, that, where was I going with that? Never mind. I'll get there. Um, so what happened? Okay, when I was a resident at Stanford, we'd have something called Grand Rounds, and that's where the doctors all meet every single week in an auditorium, and we discuss really difficult cases. And so at those Grand Rounds meetings, our chairman of our department, Dr. Gene Farber, used to say always, find residents, students, find a hobby in dermatology. And then he would point out different doctors in the room. This one, you know, his specialty was in allergic contact dermatitis, and he's written textbooks. And this guy is a skin cancer surgeon, and this guy is, uh, does, uh, you know, medical corresponding. And he'd always bring that up because he said, you know, when you're in a field, and it's true of any field that you're in, this is what you were talking about, things become rote. There is a routine to it. You st tend to see the same problems over and over again. And his point was, if you don't do that, if you don't find a hobby, some area of dermatology you really love, you're going to go out and be a doctor, and all you're going to see is acne, and you're going to be bored. So uh, that stuck with me. It's, uh, it's sort of prophetic in a lot of ways that he would yeah. say that. 